Well, our grand prize winner, Chris, is going to receive a $100 credit to the Wolfram Online store. Who is our grand prize winner? The grand prize winner is Boris Valechek from Minsk, Belarus. This is a, a beautiful example, and it's uh, worth spending a little time on to understand how it all works. Uh, let me show you what it does. Uh, I'll evaluate it, and it does nothing until you move the cursor into the graphic, and then these particles come streaming in from infinity. And if you move the cursor, the particles follow the cursor like pixie dust, and you see that there's the smaller particles are closest to the cursor, and the larger ones are farther away. If I move back out of the graphic, then the particles sit there and they vibrate, and they slowly sort of disperse, waiting for me to move back in when they, they uh, follow the cursor again. So that's a lot of functionality to pack into 140 characters. Uh, Boris got a lot of mileage out of a couple of very simple constructs. And he also took advantage of one of my very favorite constructs in Mathematica, which is a self-triggering dynamic. And I'll explain how that works. But let's take a closer look at this code. So there are two lines here of initialization. And then the, uh, a graphic, which you can see contains some disks. And this dynamic wrapper is what keeps things uh, in motion. So uh, since these variables here are not, are not localized, they're global variables, and we've already evaluated this, we can just take a peek at what their values are. R is just a function which doesn't have any arguments. And every time you evaluate it, it gives you a random number between minus a half and a half. P, P here is an array of 99 things. And each one is a pair. Let's just take a look at P. It'll make it easier to understand. So each one is a pair which contains a pair of numbers and then a single number. These are, in fact, the centers and the radii of the, of the disk that the graphic explains. So it initializes P uh, to this initial list. And then um, there's this construct here which, uh, where disk is applied to P. Let's just try that out and see what happens. What you end up with is a list of disks with the given centers and radii, and that's what the graphic displays. The meat of this uh, example is here in this expression. Let's, let's uh, take a closer look at that. So P is this list of centers and radii. And every time this expression is evaluated, it reassigns the value of P by applying this function to every element of P. So P is just a recursive function that derives a new value of P from the old value of P. And in order to explain what this is doing, uh, let me just rearrange the code very slightly by putting this bit here on the end. OK, I didn't change the functionality. So P, as you remember, uh, uh, each element of P is a list. It contains the center of the disk and the radius. So number 1, hash 1, in this expression refers to the, the center, and hash 2 uh, refers to the radius. So you can see the radius never changes. It just picks out the old radius and sticks it back in there again. All, everything that's happening is going on with these uh, the, with the values of the centers. And the way that works is, if we just look at the first part of this expression here, mouse position gives the position, the coordinates of the mouse within the graphic. And hash 1 is the current position of a disk. So this is just a linear combination of the current position and the mouse position. It's a weighted average. And uh, so what the effect of that, if you evaluate that recursively over and over again, is if the mouse position is uh, not moving, the, the disk will slowly move toward the cursor position. The rate at which the disk moves, which is the, the weight and the weighted average, is given by the diameter of the disk. So it was a very clever reuse of that, uh, that value. So the effect is that the smaller particles follow the, the cursor more closely, faster than the larger particles. And then there's this additional term, r comma r. r is the function that generates random numbers. So that's just a, a vector of two values between minus a half and a half. And it adds that to the center of the disk. And what that, the effect of that is that the disk jiggle a little bit around their nominal values. Um, that's a very nice touch. Let me just show you what happens if I eliminate that term and reevaluate. Um, it behaves similarly, but now if I move outside of the graphic, it's dead. And just by the addition of that one term, uh, it livens up the, 
uh, livens up the uh, output, and it's still doing something when you leave the graphic. Can you slow down the movement? Yeah, let's do that a little slower so it comes through quick uh, better in the, um, the live stream. Oh, I see it's, uh, it's pretty slow. The updates are pretty slow. If you do this, if you download the notebook and, and try this out yourself, it's beautifully smooth and it's a really nice effect. It's fun to play with. Hey, this is a, uh, this is a really fun example. And, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So um, uh, there are a couple other nice touches in here. So you see there's a second uh, argument to a mouse position. And what that does is, if the mouse is not within the graphic, the uh, second argument is the value that mouse position will return. And by supplying hash one, which is just the center of the disk, that makes the disk stay positioned where they where they were when the mouse when the cursor left the graphic. And then this uh, r comma r term makes them jiggle around in place. And the last thing I want to explain is uh, how the motion is achieved in this example. So. That's this concept of a self-triggering dynamic, and this dynamic wrapper is what makes it all work. Let me, let me show you a concise example of that. So uh, the way dynamic works is, um, let's say we have, uh, um, let's, let's say q plus 1, OK? So if I evaluate that, q apparently had a value. If I reset q, say I make q2, then boom, that dynamic automatically updates whenever q updates. So the front end wakes up, a uh, Mathematica wakes up, and it says, oh, Q changed, so it has to update this uh, value. If, let's stick in a pause here so things don't happen too quickly. Let's put in, say, a third of a second. And now, suppose we say Q equals Q plus one, so it's gonna reset the value of Q when this evaluates. Now, if I evaluate this, it's gonna count up, because every time uh, it evaluates, it changes the value of Q, and then it says, oh, Q changed, I have to reevaluate again. And it's a self-perpetuating self loop, and it, it keeps this thing in motion. So that's what's happening here in this sub-expression. It reassigns the value of P, the points, and uh, because this whole thing is wrapped in dynamic, it just keeps reevaluating, and those, uh, all those particles follow the cursor. So uh, that's the first prize, uh, grand prize winner. Uh, the judges were unanimous that, um, that it was deserving of the first prize, and uh, I love it. It's a, a great example. That is fantastic. And Boris is in the chat room. He said, wow, right away when he saw, saw his name pop up. So, uh, so that'll do it. Uh, those are our 15 honorable mentions and our grand prize winner to Boris. And uh, guys, any, any final thoughts here with the one-liner competition? Um, you know, if you looked at this competition and you thought, oh, I can do better than that, uh, you might keep, uh, keep in touch. We might have another one in the future. Yeah, I think uh, everyone here had a lot of fun with this, and these are definitely fun for us. I think everyone here learned quite a few things. So uh, thank you to you for all of your submissions and for hanging out with us for the last hour or so. We really do appreciate it, and congratulations to all of our winners as well. Thank you to everyone behind the scenes making this happen and run smoothly as always. So for my colleagues, Yusung Chang, Vitaly Korov, and Chris Carlson, I'm Zach Farcell saying thanks for tuning in to Mathematica Experts Live. Have a great day.